And now, our feature presentation. Stacks of lumber soaking wet. We have a spread of real trouble. Right. Ted, Haley, hit the shed. Everybody stand back, please. To the area. Stand back. Number one. We have a spot fire here by the big shed. Okay, we're hooked up. Give me water. Shawnee, you stay right there. Nothing feels broken, Dad. Listen, Chief, I can go back in there. I really you know what? Just stay put. The paramedics get <laughs> here. They're going to take a lovely x-ray of you, and I want a copy. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll get a cast, and we'll all get to sign it. No jokes, Martelli. You all got pretty lucky back there. <laughs> Plus, they all had a little help. Well, Sam, I don't know where you came from, but thank you very much. Forget it. I saw you were in trouble. I just reacted. I'm just glad we beat the odds. Hey. Bob! How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Hi, Chief. McNaughton? Bob McNaughton. Well, for heaven's sake. It's been a while. Oh, excuse me, you're not supposed well, to. You let him through. I wasn't supposed to. That's well, a good thing you did, look. Yeah, he knew exactly what to do. I guess so. Don't you know who that is? No, should I? Bob McNaughton, the, the greatest fireman who ever wore the uniform of Task Force One. And I'm his brother. Why did I get the feeling I'm in desperate trouble here? Because you are. 
Mate. No, wait, I can still block you. Hey, what's the matter? Uh, it's just bothering me a little. Uh, excuse me. Well, I don't even know why you brought out the game, Chris. You never could beat him. Well, I figured after five years, he'd forget all my weaknesses. Hey, guys, don't feel uncomfortable about me. I can walk. It's good enough. Look, I'm sorry. I was thinking about what might have happened if you hadn't pushed me out of the way. Yeah, if you'd pushed me out of the way. Look, never mind. We're lucky only one of us ended up like this. Bob, I guess yesterday brought back quite a few memories. <sighs> yeah. When I realized Haley was trapped, I swear it was like... It was like it was happening all over again. I, I just came around. Look, at least yesterday there were plenty of us to help out. When you got caught, there was just you and me. Remember that? Look, let's not go through it all again. You did everything you could, Ted. You know it. Bob, did, did it take you a long time to adjust? I mean, with your leg? <sighs> Too long. Too long. I kept dwelling on what a raw deal had been handed me, and instead of accepting this thing and getting on with my life. Look, I wish you'd stayed in L.A. Maybe we could have helped. Maybe. But maybe not. I... I hated being around the places I knew. Like the firehouse and you guys. And not be the same person anymore. Well, I'm back. And we're That's glad to have you back. Yeah. I just Real wish you'd stop playing chess. <laughs> Where did Sean and Danny go? Oh, upstairs, Mom. Good. He said something about not being welcome huh? in the kitchen. If they hung around the refrigerator any longer, I'd have had to send out for supplies. I wish Sean would keep our little family <laughs> secrets. He has a grudge against uneaten food. He attacks it immediately. <laughs> he attacks it immediately. Your brother attacks it immediately. Do you remember when we used to come in here on Sundays and watch the games? Oh, Who attacked the food? We there? used to go through some food. A few oh, potato chips. A few maybe. potato <laughs> chips. Oh, the grocer would smile when he saw me coming to lay in provisions. I wonder why we don't do that for the games anymore. Well, we... I don't know. I, I guess we just fell out of habit. Well, now that the McNaughton's are back, I think we should revive the tradition. We'll be here. Then I'd better start planning the menu tonight. Say, that uh, brother of yours, he's really gotten big. I mean, last time we saw him, he was, what, ten? Five years, yeah, ten, yeah. You should be very proud. He's a fine young man. Yeah. I'm sure it hasn't been easy with, with everything else, but he's very lucky to have you. No, no, I'm the lucky one. He's, he's helped me through some bad times. Well... I hope you'll accept what I'm going to say in the way I mean it. If there's any way we can help you, money, work... I could always count on the Roar checks. But don't worry about me. The department's been great. I'm on a disability pension. I have full medical coverage on my leg. What I really need to do is get my life going again. And that's up to me. Of course, but don't forget you can always come to us. That's right, buddy. For anything. Always could. Okay. Let's see now. Oh, good move. Are you sure that's the move you want to make? Just play. You'll see soon enough. My brother and I have been on our own since our folks died. I was uh, seven. Pretty rough. I guess so at first, but it's been great since. Bob and I are basically loners anyway. We don't like to settle down. How about now? We're gonna try, but if it's not for us, we're gone. We've lived seven or eight places in the last five years. You like that? Sure. Every time we move, we get a new start. Well, I'm different. I got my new start with the Roar Chicks, and I want it to last forever. Don't you feel hemmed in? Uh, well... I have to act a little more behaved than I used to, but I go sailing with Ted, and Chris gives me flying lessons, and I go out to fire. Look at this one. That's me. I used to hang out at the firehouse all the time before uh, Bob was hurt. Hey, well, you can come back now, and you can be an explorer with me. No, I couldn't do that. It wouldn't be right for me to go do something that Bob can't do anymore, you know? Well, I guess. What about basketball? We got a basketball team that plays after school. Now, see, you don't understand. I I've... I don't have a lot of time to fool around. And I've got to help Bob with some things. 
Well, Bob looks like he could take care of himself. Hmm. That's what he wants everybody to think, but sometimes he... Well, anyway, I don't mind. I mean, he's my brother. I know what you mean. If Ted or Chris ever got hurt, well, I'd take care of him just like they were my brother. <laughs> well, that's the first place I'd look. <laughs> hey, hold your horses. Just trying out the old hoop. I really just wanted to take a look around back there. Remind myself. I've had some great times in this house. Well, there's more to come, buddy. Counting on it. We'll have you over for an apartment warming as soon as we get the place fixed up. Where is it? It's River Vista, I think it's called, right, Sean? Uh, it's about a mile up. Well, if you need anything. I know, I know, if we need anything. <laughs> <laughs> Today was plenty. Thanks for dinner and... Just... And we'll see you soon. Hey, don't forget about tomorrow now. I'll be there. Just bring the tomatoes. You got it, right off the vine. <sighs> Thanks for the chocolate. Sure, bye-bye. Oh, see well. you, Sean. Thomas tomatoes, I better go see if there's any ripe enough to pick. How'd Bob get hurt anyway? Well, uh, fighting a fire, Danny. Bad accident. I mean, really a bad accident. Or well, so they said. See, Danny, there was a fire in an old machine shop. Bob and I were working the hose line. There's a lot of grease and oil and thick smoke. The uh, main support beam gave way and came right down on top of him. It was on fire. Must have weighed a thousand pounds. There was nobody around but me to help. Well, you didn't hurt him. I mean, I bet you did everything you could to help. Of course he did. Matter of fact, we had to bring in a jack to get the beam off Bob's leg. No one could have done more than Ted did. That's right. His hands were out of commission for quite some time. Uh, they healed up pretty fast. I don't even have a scar to remind me. No, just a tough raw check, that's all. Joe, boys, come here, quick. How could this have happened? I had worked for six months on this garden. It was just starting to thrive. Oh, sweetheart. Mm. Mm -hmm. I know when I've met my match, and you are definitely it. If this red was any hotter, we'd have to post a firewatch, boys. You know, it's very disappointing the caliber of firemen since I used to run that kitchen. If you did the cooking, I'm surprised there's any survivors. The trouble with you new guys, you don't appreciate the fine points of a good bowl of Yeah, bread. that's right, guys. Now, you notice with Bob's chili, it doesn't burn too bad at first, like that cheap stuff does. It just kind of builds up nice and slow till you feel like your teeth are glowing. Would have been better with fresh tomatoes, though. Hey, I'm sorry about that, partner. Somebody broke into Mom's garden last night, tore it all to pieces. I'm surprised you didn't see it when, when you were back there shooting baskets. Sorry, I didn't see a thing. Is that common for your neighborhood? No, it's the first time. Must be some new kids that moved into town. First chance I get, I'm going to check it out. I'll tell you what, Mom got steamed. I'm getting more onions. I could use some water. You know what your trouble is, Bob? You can dish it up, but you can't take it. <laughs> You okay? Oh, sure, just a little stiff. The x-rays were negative. I rested yesterday, but I feel a lot better moving around. No, you shouldn't be too brave. It's not the kind of experience you can just shake off. Believe me, I'm not being brave. But I guess you know what you're talking about. I was talking to Ted this morning about your... My leg? Uh, well, I was going to say injury, but yes, that's what I mean. It doesn't bother me. Honest. Even coming from a beautiful woman. It's one of those things I learned quick. Be honest. It's the only way. By the way, I really like your chili. Good. Here, put this in with the rest. Oh, shame. We can always get more. Is this it? Not enough. Just take it all out front. I don't even want to see it again. Oh, and while you're out there, get the mail. Who else knows about this? 
Just us. We came right over. I think we're getting just a little bit past the prank stage. But who would want to do anything like this? Why? Same reason they wrecked the tomatoes, right? Probably, Danny. I'd just like to know who it is. I don't care why. Well, I checked with all the guys. They can't take anybody who've had enforcement problems with recently. Well, neither can I. Especially anybody who'd single us out. Well, what do they mean, uh, I'll get you? Somebody out there doesn't like us very much. Arsonists. Maybe somebody you tried to put in jail in the past is trying to even the score. Well, it's a pretty long shot. I'll check it out, though. Meanwhile, let's everybody be very careful. We'll take care of each other. You bet we will, kiddo. I think Chris and I ought to arrange to trade some shifts, so at least one of us is in the house at night. It's a good idea. Now, let's not get drastic. This is a new experience for all of us. But we're a family. Remember that. We can take care of each other, no matter what. Right. Right. school here yeah I registered today I guess we don't have any classes together though too bad you know but we can still shoot some baskets if you don't have to go home right away I, I told you I can't well maybe you can just meet some of my friends you'd like them uh, look I've got to do the grocery shopping and and then I gotta help Bob with some stuff but um, if you got time to shoot baskets go ahead I'm sorry I didn't mean I know look um, we'll, we'll do it soon I promise hey I got an idea I can go home, tell them what I'm doing, go with you shopping, and then go over to your place. No, you can't. Um, Bob isn't good today, Danny. I, uh, forget it. Listen, Sean, I want to help. Tell me how. Look, Bob gets funny sometimes, like he used to. He gets depressed is all. <laughs> Takes him a little while to get over it. And while he's that way, I'm the only one who knows what to do. <laughs> what he's like, he, he says things he doesn't mean, he does things. Really, Danny, we'll get together soon, but until then, I gotta go now. I'll see you. Later. You just tell me who you are. You know. No, I don't know. What do you want? Tell me. We better call your father. I just don't know if it'll do any good. It'll only worry him and he's stuck at the station. I have been a fireman's wife for a lot of years. I have heard the sirens in the night. I have lain here and wondered, will he come home? Will, will they come home? I'll tell you something. This is worse. Hello, this is Ted Rorchek. Now listen, Ed. This is Dad. Is everything all right? Uh, yeah, Dad. It's, it's fine. It's oh. just fine. I'm getting a little worried. I should be home in a couple of hours. Okay, Dad. Uh, I'll tell Mom. Bye bye. You better get this mess off here before it dries. 
When did you say you parked it? Oh, about 7, 7.30. Must have happened after that. Well, it's obviously connected to the note and the phone calls. What does this, uh, I'll get you mean? Well, that's part of the whole pattern. We don't know what it means. Mm, well, if it were isolated vandalism, there wouldn't be too much we could do, but direct threats, that's something. Well, look, what about fingerprints? Well, if you want to bring it down to the station, we'll see if we can lift some prints, but, uh... That car's pretty tough. Uh, it's got your prints on it, it's got your mechanic's prints Look, on I'm it. I'm talking about the guy who trashed my Jeep. That's the problem. We don't have somebody to match the prints up with. You got any ideas? Well, we're not exactly a family that goes around making enemies. At least I don't think we are. Professionally, I've checked every arsonist I put behind bars. Nothing. What about, uh, personal? Uh, how about neighbors you had differences with? Oh, or, no. uh, no. someone new around? Well, <laughs> There is one remote possibility. Ted, Dad, don't make guesses. Come on, we're all thinking it. We might as well say it. Look, Detective uh, Schwimmer. Schwimmer, I'm not making any accusations, but there is somebody. Uh, there's a fireman who used to work with us named Bob McNaughton. He was injured about five years ago and then given a disability retirement. Man, are, are you saying that he did this? No, I'm not saying he did it. I'm, I'm just saying it's a possibility, that's all. And he did just move back to L.A. Well... I'm afraid we can't do much with maybes. Look, when you call your insurance company, you be sure to tell them you report it to the police. Give me a call at this number. Thank you. At least I'm not the only one. Only one what? Who's worried? What makes you think I'm worried? After 29 years, Joe Rorchek, all you have to do is lift one of those eyebrows. Okay. Okay. But it is after 6 o'clock, and Danny's usually home by this well, time. Well, he did say that he was going to be late at the playground, and... Oh. Hey, Sunshine, come on. <laughs> it, it's nothing, I'm sure it is. Oh, I know it's nothing. It's just that... that... Ted's Jeep this morning, all those phone calls in the middle of the night. I know, I know, I know. But, you know, being careful is one thing, but uh, changing a whole way of living just because some idiot is... I know. But it is late. Yes, it is. I just thought we'd keep an eye on him. We were trying to be inconspicuous. Sort of like guardian angels. Well, I don't think it was a bad idea. I think we should keep an eye on each other. It's just too bad Danny had to crack up on his bike. Well, I was scared. I didn't know who they were. It wasn't your fault. You shouldn't have been late. That was your fault. Let's keep it calm, shall we? Well, it's hard to stay calm when there's a nut out there taking pot shots at you. Hey, Al, I'm not so sure that it's some nut. Now, look. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can't help thinking that Bob McNaughton is behind us. What? Well, wait a minute. I did talk to Sean yesterday, and he said Bob was acting real weird. But, I mean, why would he do anything to you anyway? He's your friend, isn't he? Danny, he didn't say it was Bob. He's just making a guess. It wasn't a very good guess, either. You can't be serious. I don't know him very well, but I do sense that he doesn't blame you. Look, I hope you're right. It's a whole idea. What? Well, it isn't. It isn't even worth discussing. Well, wait a minute. There might be something to it. The guy lost his leg. He must have gone through hell. You never know. I mean, why did he come back to Los Angeles? Ask yourself that. I know why he came back to Los Angeles. He was born in Los Angeles. He's trying to start his life all over again. We haven't seen Bob in five years. Now that's five long, hard years for him. How do we know he's still our friend? How do you know he isn't? I'll get him. Oh, hi, 
Bob. Hi, Joe. You said I could borrow anything. How about a mop and a bucket? Yeah. Uh, sure. If this is a bad time, I can... Oh, no, 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 no. Just a family affair. Come on, we'll get your mop. I think it was a setup. There's no proof of that. Mike? No, sir. We checked all over as soon as things cooled down. The car that rolled was just unstable. That's good enough for me. Oh, come on. Doesn't it sound a little suspicious? Look, what better place in a junkyard to start a fire that could get us into trouble? Well, I'll go along with that, Ted, but I don't think it's suspicious. I already know whose side you're on, okay? Now, what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Ted's a little... Yes, that's all. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry, you stupid. Look, Dad, I'm going to trade with somebody for the rest of the day off, okay? I don't know, I'm going sailing or something. Good idea to go sailing. It'll cool you off. Okay, partner, the usual drill. Only this time I want to go out of here under sail. Aye, aye, sir, standing by. All right, now raise the main halfway up the mast. I'll just use the auxiliary to give a steerage out of the slip. That's a nut! Look, you probably dropped the line in the water and forgot about what it. What about my sail? Well, maybe the canvas was rotten. It could have split on its own. Come on, Lenny, you know better than that. You sold it to me yourself not eight, nine months ago. All right, all right. So you explain it. Listen, somebody cut it up. Even I know that. And that same somebody wrapped a line nice and tight around my propeller. Now, what I want to know is how that somebody got on my boat. Oh, I don't know. Look, I can't watch all of these boats at the same time. You mean you didn't even see any strangers? No. Well, I, I did see a guy yesterday, way out on the end of the pier. He could have been on your boat. Maybe. I don't bother me anymore. Bob 
here? Uh, uh, he's, uh, taking a walk or something. You need to talk to him? No, I need to talk to you. You see, Ted thinks it's my brother because he feels guilty himself. But from the way Ted tells it, he shouldn't feel guilty. I mean, Bob was just having some bad luck, and now we are. Well, what are you going to do about it? I can't do anything. But I wish everyone would just at least sit down and talk, okay? We can't do that right now. Uh, Bob isn't feeling too good. But we got to do it soon. This can't just go on and on. So you blame Bob, too? No, I'm just trying to figure this out. Mrs. Rorschach told me that, well, after Bob got out of the hospital, you guys just split. I mean, no letters, no calls, nothing. For five years, nobody knew where you were. I mean, why? The Rorchicks were Bob's best friends. Look, I told you, we were loners. Bob needed a new start. Yeah, but not telling your friends. Yeah, you'll never know what he went through. I was young, but I remember it all. He, he had the pain, and he felt like a freak. He couldn't do anything but sit or hobble around on crutches. Must have been rough. It still is. Bob still uses pills to sleep with. He, he still looks at himself in the mirror and remembers what it's like being normal. You'll never understand. I want to. Do you really? I'm his own brother, and I don't always know what's going on inside of his head. For some reason, he just had to come back to L.A. I don't know why, but here we are. Anyway, I'm glad you came back. Are you really? All things considered? Well, in the first place, Bob only came to me after his accident as part of the rehabilitation process. Please, sit down. Thank you. He had no special problems outside of that. Now, I'm chief rehab counselor here, and Bob spent most of his time with our therapists, not me. Well, anything you can tell us will help, Miss Bristol. Oh, Denise, please. Well, my work here at the clinic is largely administrative, but let me see what I can tell you. See, what we must know is if Bob has so much hatred in him that he would terrorize people or a family or anyone who would want to help him. Well, that's unlikely. But, of course, Bob hasn't been here for three years and a lot can happen. Mm. If he is doing what you suspect, he needs immediate attention. You said if before you said unlikely. I'm not a psychiatrist. And from the looks of these charts, Bob's rehabilitation was not easy. Prior to his accident, Bob was very close with our family. I'm just having trouble accepting that, that he's behind this. If there is a kernel of hatred left in Bob, it may be buried so deeply even he doesn't know it's there. You mean he's doing all these things unconsciously? I'm only speculating. That would be an extreme form of psychosis, and there isn't any evidence pointing to that. If you can't tell us yes or no, then can you tell us if he's got a reason? I mean... Do you think Bob's blaming my brother or us for, for what happened to his leg? I can only tell you that it's very common for patients to have a natural feeling of regret over an injury like Bob's. Very common. They put blame a lot of places. But according to these reports, before Bob ended his sessions here, he was seeing his life in a much more constructive way. At least we thought so. to know if you want some help. 
Uh, vet to stay at the station. Just tell him I'll be able to do this myself. No. The police are coming, Joe. They'll be here in about an hour. Mom, well, tell Dan I, I chased this guy off. I told him, I told him. No, we're going to be fine. We're locking everything up. Yes, I think it's for the best, too. Bring everything to a head. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Why can't you wait till the morning? No, Danny, I have to confront Bob now. If it is him. It's possible he doesn't even know he's doing any of this. If I get over to his apartment now, I'll be able to prove it. Well, be careful. Okay, do what Mom says and lock this door. I don't think it's Bob. I don't want to think so either, kiddo, but it's beginning to look more that way. Yes? It's Chris Warcheck. I have to see Bob. He's asleep. I'm sorry, Sean. I'm going to have to wake him up. Do you have to? Yes, I do. He's not here, Chris. I don't know where he is. He, he said he was going out and he hasn't come back. Well, when he gets back, I want to see him immediately. Well, he should have called by now. If he'd had anything to tell us, I'm sure he would have. It takes five minutes to drive over there. You're really full of assumptions tonight. Well, I think it's time somebody was. The man broke into your house. And on what basis do you make that assumption? Come on. How long are you going to keep giving him the benefit of the doubt? Look, this is crazy. I can't just stand around here and do nothing. I'm going over there. Sit down. You're on duty. And keep your cool. The last thing we need is to lose control. Control? Dad, we've already lost control. We just sit around and wait for Bob to do whatever he wants. What's it going to take before you decide we've had enough? No one is more concerned about this than I am. All right. If Chris doesn't call in uh, 15 minutes, you can go. Does that satisfy you? Hey, Sophie, knock it off. She doesn't know me anymore. Yeah, none of us do. That's not going to help anything, Ted. Uh, we have a lot of talking to do. Yeah, to start with, like, what were you doing snooping around at my folks' house just now? What? I wasn't anywhere near there. Well, that's easy for you to say. What are you trying to say? We're not trying to say anything. We have questions. A lot of questions. Let's go into my office and we'll explain. You, you don't have to explain a thing. Danny was over today talking to Sean and I got all the details. I couldn't sleep until I found out what has got into all of you. Well, there isn't a word for it, buddy. At least not one I want to use right now. Well, don't hold back on my account. I mean, since when did you have such good judgment? Hey, listen, ah, man. All right. Tell him. What's anger going to do? Nothing. We should talk. But calmly. And with friendship. How can we? I mean, how do you think this makes me feel, huh? My friends. Link together some crazy series of unrelated events like that. I'm your enemy. You can have it your way. Just for the record, I'm not your man. I believe you, Bob. But I also believe that you don't know what you're doing. Your counsel... Oh, that's up. great! You're prying into my mental health, and where do you people draw the line? Yeah, where I... do you? Remember this. Your score is with me, not my family. You leave them out of this. The only person carrying my accident around in his head is you. I, uh, I put it behind me. Gone, out of my life. Because I need a future, Ted. 
And I suggest you do the same. Let it go. Let's get to the bottom of it, huh? the instant. Did you save some for Chris? Yeah, it's on the stove. He should be back here any time. I, I hope this thing is finally worked out. What's that? I don't know. For a while there, I was so sure it had to be you. Code red, code red, test force one, battalion six, structure fire at 607 Drury Street. That's my house. Danny and Ann. That's 607 Drury Street, your time at 06 below. Okay, Danny put the fire out. Joe, uh, who could have done this? I don't know whoever was that piled the bags on top of the porch. Danny, you didn't see anybody doing anything, did you? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, you, you, you mean you, you think you did? Come on, Danny, even if it's only a guess, it may help us. I want to clear this up as much as any of you know. Danny, for me, please. It was Sean. That's absurd. It's bad enough you blame me, but now my brother? Danny, it's a very serious thing you've said. You said just even if I had to guess. Yes, Danny, but in this case... In this case, I'm not guessing. Well, why would Sean? He doesn't have anything against you. There he is. Why don't you ask him? It's time to go, Bobby. But let's go now. Why, Sean? What you've done is a terrible, terrible thing. Let's go, Bobby, please. No, Sean. We can't run anymore. Ah, Sean. Sean, we'll work it out. Oh, I just hope they go easy on him. Well, the judge has deferred sentencing Sean until he's finished his psychological treatment. That's good. And I hope the courts take into consideration that Sean is a very disturbed young man. I'll never forget that last look on his face. Uh, you know, he was so jealous of us. It didn't matter what the price, he wanted his brother all to himself. You know, I think I understand Sean's feeling, though. I mean, for five years, it was just the two of them. And, of course, he never got over what happened to his big brother. And, and with no parents, Bob was... Yes, his whole family. I can understand Sean's problem. All his life, he looked up to Bob. Bob was the man he wanted to be like. And suddenly, one day, Bob was a broken man. It flipped him. What about you, Ted? Are you getting it together? Uh, I guess so, partner. Slowly. You know, it's funny. The man who's actually hurts the one who recovers. 
The rest of us are still trying. Still being tough on yourself, Ted. I can't help it, Dad. Well, why don't you do as Bob suggested the other night? Forget it. Let it pass. Because I was the one who was cruel to him, wasn't I? I mean, there he was, giving it his best shot, and I was just laying the blame right on There is no way that we could have known it was Sean. Bob didn't even know. I just wish we could help him in some way. We will, son. Just as soon as he lets us. Hello, I'm Fire Chief John Gerard. Anytime a home burns, it's a family tragedy. This fire could have been a lot worse. But thanks to a smoke detector, the family escaped in plenty of time. People just don't realize how deadly smoke can be or how fast fire can consume a home. That is why the early warning provided by smoke detectors is so important. Remember, smoke detectors do save lives. It's a nicer world with you in it.